starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Economic Development Webinar Series. My name is Susan Lowe. I'm with the Design Coordination and Outreach Branch of the Ministry of Jobs, Trade and Technology. Uh, I'm moderating and providing some technical support for today's webinar and uh, interfacing with Daryl here, who is uh, located in Noose Bay, Vancouver Island, which is the traditional lands of the Sananawas Nation. I'm in uh, Victoria on the unceded Coast Salish territory of the Likwangan people known today as the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations. Before we go any further, I'll just review some of our housekeeping items. For those of you who are new to the webinar platform, uh, you have two choices for connecting to audio. You can use your computer audio, or if you're not on a very fast internet connection, you may want to choose telephone and dial in. Um, if you click on the little radio button that says phone call on your control panel, it'll give you a phone number and an access code and a PIN, uh, which will let us identify who you are on the call. Uh, we will be using the enter a question for staff um, box on today's webinar, so have your keyboards and mice handy. Um, the little uh, orange box little icon lets you know that you're muted. Uh, the little blue box lets you expand the webinar to full screen if you don't want any other distractions on your desktop. Uh, the little hand lets you raise your hand. Uh, we won't be using that today because there's many of you and few of us. Um, but in the future, we might go there. Uh, if you're joining us through the Instant Join web app, it looks a little bit different, and your audio settings are hidden in behind the gear icon. So if you click on that, it will get you to your telephone um, settings. Um, one thing I'd like you to do before we get started is uh, let us know what you are hoping to learn from this webinar. So use that Ask a Question to the Staff box, and uh, type in what you're hoping to get out of today's webinar. Uh, Daryl and I will hopefully address many of those issues through the webinar. And if not, you can always send emails um, to economicdevelopment.gov.bc.ca and I'll pass them on to Daryl and we'll get them answered for you. A few more items uh, just to give you a little bit of time to ask your questions. Uh, the session is being recorded. I'm just going to double check. Yes, it's being recorded. And uh, the audio and screen are being recorded. The webcams aren't. Uh, the speaker slides and the presentation will be shared. We upload these to YouTube and then post them to our website under the BC Ideas Exchange banner and look for our past webinar recordings uh, page. So uh, it takes us about a week to get all of that together. Um, and Try to move that along as fast as we can for you. Um, uh, here's something new. Uh, we are in the process of gathering feedback about the economic development website. That's what you get to when you go to gov.bc.ca slash economic development. Uh, what information do you look for there? Uh, is it easy for you to find things there? Are there gaps in what you're looking for or uh, are things not in a place where you would have expected to find them? So our team is doing user experience research in November and December and January. Uh, if you'd like to participate in that and give your feedback, please send us an email, economicdevelopment.gov.bc.ca, and uh, we will send you our questions, possibly line up a 10 to 15 minutes uh, phone chat. And we really appreciate your feedback as we try to make this website a better tool for you. So let's see if we have any questions. Answered. Yes, we do. So uh, a couple of people are looking for information about how to assist people with succession planning in a small community. You've come to the right webinar. Uh, how can I encourage or assist local small businesses with succession planning for their business? Um, uh, from an executive director of a chamber of commerce. Economic development is not my defined role, but I feel like I have a part of it for my community, as do we all. So um, thank you very much. So from a chamber of commerce's perspective, how to support business succession. So those are some things which I hope we'll address as we go forward into our presentation. Um, what did I do here? Supporting business succession in your community. <laughs> there we go. We have, uh, oh, this is where I was going to talk about what you were looking for. So uh, before we get started, however, I want to ask a poll question to get you engaged in uh, today's webinar. So there, this is a answer as many as apply to you. 
uh, what are the trends you're seeing in your community uh, regarding business succession and transition? Uh, now, I'm hoping that this is actually showing for all of you. I know that it doesn't show for me as a presenter, but we have some responses coming in. That's great. I'll leave it up for about a minute and we'll try to get really high voter turnout. Um, I know you're all a very engaged group of people. So what are you seeing in your community? Um, business owners closing and uh, retiring, um, potential buyers struggling for capital, businesses being for sale for long periods of time, businesses being transferred to employees, uh, people from outside the community coming in. Uh, this is just to get a sense of what's happening in the communities out there. So we've got about 75% voter turnout at this point. I know some of you are busy multitasking, I forgive you. So I'll close the poll now and we'll see what the results were. So 83% of our respondents are seeing business owners retiring and closing their business. Not surprising, that's very high. 50% uh, potential buyers struggling for capital. 75% of you are seeing businesses being for sale for long periods of time. Uh, only 8% say they're seeing businesses being transferred to employees. And 33% are seeing people from outside their community coming in as business buyers. So thank you very much for participating in that. Uh, we'll carry on now. I want to introduce, and actually I'm going to let Daryl tell us a little bit about him uh, before he carries on. Daryl, why don't you take it away and tell us about yourself? Okay, my name is Daryl. I'm um, a business advisor with Venture Connect. Venture Connect is a subsidiary of a number of community futures. And I've been working, and, and our focus is on um, business succession and retention in rural communities. So I've been working with business owners. Um, we started working with business owners, uh, I guess I've been about six years I've been doing this. Um, in the last three, we've also been working considerably more with on the buyer side in helping buyers who are looking for businesses find good opportunities in um, rural BC. So our focus is outside of Vancouver and Victoria. Um, and I have worked, I, I traveled, um, some of you may have sat through some of my uh, seminars um, uh, around the province and I've worked with uh, business sellers and buyers in pretty much every community around the province. So we have a, a pretty decent idea of what's happening. We've also been doing, we do a lot of research and, and try and look at, at some of the reasons why things are happening and, and what things that we can do to, um, you know, try and find better success for our uh, business, uh, small business communities. So um, that's my background. Before that, um, I was in business myself. I've had a number of small businesses. I was a partner in a medium-sized business, and I also spent uh, about 14 years in the uh, corporate world, working in Vancouver, Toronto, New York, Boston. So, you know, I've been around a little bit um, and seen lots of uh, good scenarios and bad scenarios. So, um, what we try and do is help people understand in their own situation what will give them the best chance to succeed at what is uh, can be a difficult and very emotional um, uh, situation for for many uh, small business owners. So um, I was very interested in the poll. I was the only thing I was surprised about was that there were only eight percent of you that were seeing. Uh, employees uh, transferring businesses that that was a bit surprising because I I suppose I'm involved in many situations like that around the problem so maybe I'm getting the exception in in some um, cases um, but yeah that was that was the only surprise the rest of it you know I thought it was it was good to see that um, you're seeing the same things I am so um, so you want me to launch straight in so what are the demographic trends that are contributing to the business succession uh, crunch? And how are these factors more severe in small rural communities? So the first thing is a simple demographic shift. We now have more older people than younger people. Um, so there is, if you look at the bars on this um, uh, graph here, the red is those of us who are baby boomers. 
and the blue is um, Gen X. So typically we would find that baby boomers are the sellers of businesses, um, especially as we're getting a little uh, older now. Um, there, some of the younger baby boomers are still buyers. Um, so, you know, I think we actually haven't hit the worst stretch. Um, demographically, um, more pain is coming um, as the later boomers, uh, you know, get older and need to sell their businesses as well. But if you look at the red bars versus the blue bars, in all of our regions other than, you know, the Northeast, which is the oil patch, or um, the uh, mainland, you know, lower mainland, all of the rest of us have a, a serious shortfall in younger uh, people. Uh, we, there's a lot more older folks than younger folks. And the younger folks are the ones that we need to buy the business uh, businesses. When you know people in their 60s buy a business, you know, of course, there's the rare exception where we've got lots of energy and we're in it for the long haul at, at 65. But the reality is that when you buy a business at 65, you're either looking for more of a hobby or it's a shorter term scenario. It's not something that you're looking at building and and adding new growing and and adding new things to the community so from a community standpoint we really want the younger buyers to be putting the energy into the business for the long haul now as we go along so that's simple demographics but when we look at rural bc we have an additional problem and the problem is sim is just a continuation of the migration from rural to urban that we've been seeing in North America. Um, the, the population, if you look at, um, you know, from 1996 in, that, in the little chart at the bottom, um, the little grid, you see from 1996 to 2011, a 15 year period, um, the population in rural BC declined by 10%. So that, you know, that's not something any of us have experienced in our lifetime. This, this is something new. So not only do we have an older population, but we have a shrinking population. So when we are looking for buyers and younger buyers in businesses, we're, we're gonna be faced with this sort of double whammy that we're hitting. Um, we're getting older and the, and our population is migrating to urban centers. So there, there, if unless we do something, there are going to be fewer and fewer buyers for small businesses in our rural communities. Um, and do we have another, is there another one? Um, we've, okay, so, yeah. so on that, the trend is, and the trend is not better, the trend forecasts from the province are the, the trend of decline in rural uh, communities is going to continue for at least the next 10 years. Um, and then as we translate that to small business, we see that small business numbers are declining in all regional areas except for the lower mainland. So you can pick your region, um, but if you look at numbers from you know, 2007, 2008 to 2016, which is the last year I've got uh, for them, you're gonna you see a decline um, in you know, and it's 10% in many areas. It can be it's as much as 25% in some, um, but it's substantial if you think about a 10-year period. This is the total number of businesses. So this is not measuring businesses that are closing. This is measuring the net loss of. Uh, small businesses in each region. Um, so, you know, you know, if you're in economic development, our communities have been built on a model for growth. Um, all of our municipalities are expecting, you know, at least inflationary increases in property taxes and things like that and expenses. So as, and we all know that businesses contribute substantially to the life of the community. They contribute tax-wise. They they carry more of the generally more of the burden of tax than resident property, uh, residential property. They provide employment 
um, and they and they round out our businesses with the services and products and services and things that that we need to have our, the livability of our and attract you know attraction of our communities to new um, uh, residents. So you know what do we see from this? Empty storefronts, a lack of shopping or service options. Can you buy everything that you used to in your community? Depends on the size of the community, uh, but in smaller communities, I'd suggest that there are many where you can't. And people now drive, you know, an hour to go to, you know, our regional centers. So the Prince George's and Kamloops, Kelowna uh, are, are growing. But, you know, when you factor that in, even, even when you factor in the growth of those regional and, and Nanaimo, those regional communities, we're still declining. So you see how hard some communities are being hit by the, the population decline. So, you know, in order for us to be um, competitive and, and attractive to new um, people, uh, new residents, we can't let things go too far. So I sometimes get, um, uh, you know, taken to task for being, um, uh, you know, a bit negative on things. And the reality is that all of this simply says to me that you can't snap your, you can't expect to snap your fingers and sell your business. Um, the bottom line is that if you want to sell your business, you're in a competition. Um, there are lots and lots of businesses for sale. Some of them don't look very good. And if you want to sell your business, it has to be attractive. It has to have something to offer. So, the ingredients, first ingredient that makes for successful business succession or transact, uh, transition is that the business is attractive to somebody. Um, the more people it's attractive to, the better. Um, there's, when I work with business uh, owners who are looking at selling, I take them through sort of the process of thinking about who would buy their business and who their business would be attractive to. And there's a number of different kinds of, um, of buyers. So, and, and those, you know, are looking for different things. Uh, employees, uh, whether somebody's just looking at the, the dollars and how much uh, money, whether, whether it's um, a fun business, whether, you know, so, so there's a bunch of factors that make up what makes the business attractive. But first and foremost is that the business needs to, um, you know, have something to offer that makes it stand out um, so that people will want to buy it. A lot of younger buyers, like younger, you know, uh, business people today are, are taught to start a business. In our colleges and universities, there's a lot of um, energy put into that. And we have accelerator programs and we have, um, uh, you know, lots of different programs and lots of different stories about people who've gotten rich and, and you know, out of their garage and, and that's a cool way to go and isn't that wonderful. But the reality is for most um, business young people, young people who are looking at business, they'd be far better off to buy a business and turn it into something, even if they're going to tweak it and, and grow it. The, the, it's, a, it's a buyer's market. There are lots and lots of opportunities. And so that actually is the best approach for them. Um, they, so, so the biggest thing really is uh, in transition is that a owner, an owner um, is prepared to do the work. Um, and this, the biggest mistake that most owners make is that they don't sell um, when their business is attractive. So if you look at this graphic, um, 95% oh, of business owners sell uh, after their business has peaked and it's in decline. So some of them, if you look at, you know, the, the uh, sec, sort of second tier 20%, um, it's not the end of the world. You've kind of harvested it for, for a little while. You've taken your foot off the gas, but now you're selling and you know the revenue is still good there's still income they can still you know a buyer could borrow against uh you know there's there's still some value in the business but most uh owners stay far too long they wait they wait they wait they 
you know, are making much less than they used to. And then, and they don't put money back into it. The, uh, you know, the hours start to, now we're only open 10 to four, four days a week, um, you know, because people aren't buying anyways and, and on and on we go. And then in the end, there's little uh, value for someone to uh, purchase the business. So most of the time for, an, a buy, for a buyer, that's not attractive. So what we try and do when we work with sellers is to get people to start sooner. Um, a lot of business owners, it's emotional. They don't want to tip their hand. They don't want to commit. They don't want customers to think that they might leave the business that they've been in for 30 years. Um, some of it is that they, you know, their personalities are all caught up in the business and they, they, they struggle to see how the business can survive without them. Um, but if the business can't survive without them, then it's not going to. So what they need to do is make sure that the business can, or they're not going to end up with uh, any value in it when they go to try and sell it. So that's the biggest thing that, that we work with on the, uh, on the seller side. Um, I think, are we on the buyer side now? Yeah. Do. So on the buyer side, there's, there's two things to think about um, in economic development. First is where are they coming from? And second is what are they looking for? Now on the poll results, can't remember, I think there was about a third of the people that said they saw buyers coming from outside the community. Is that? Yeah, 33%. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the numbers that we deal with um, would be higher than that. I, I would say the clients that we deal with probably half come from outside the community. But that may simply be that we're involved in fewer sales that are going on within the community. So the, the kinds of sales we, we work on. Um, but it's a significant percentage of people who come out from outside the community. So in economic development, I think what we need to realize is that a lot of times people that are coming from elsewhere are looking for the combination of business and community. Mm. So they're looking for a, a good business opportunity and a community that they would be happy to live in. So from the perspective of someone coming from Alberta, they may not care whether it's Quinnell or Williams Lake or Prince George or Vanderhoof. Um, what they may care more about is they like the region and they find a business that they like. And so, and that will drive them to a location. So we see that quite a bit. People are looking and they go for what is the best business opportunity in the field that they're looking. You know, I'm a mechanic, I'm coming from Alberta. The guy behind me bought, just did this. He uh, was looking, you know, I'm on the island. So he was looking on the island for, I think it was like two years for the right kind of, um, you know, uh, car repair or auto repair uh, business. And he found one, it happened to be in this community and bought the business and then he bought his house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so that was his plan. Took a few years to, um, you know, come to fruition, but they're, you know, in their forties, good kind of uh, person to add to the community here is pretty old. So, you know, they're actually quite young, a lot of energy, money, you know, so it's good. Um, but really they, they chose the community because of the business. Um, sometimes we also see uh, people that come to um, a community for one spouse has a job and then they're new to the community and the other spouse is looking for a business. Um, so they, you know, technically maybe they didn't come to that community for the, um, the business, but they are still new to the community. So one of the things that um, we can do in economic development or in the chamber is that we can be, you know, I, I won't maybe call it matchmakers, but certainly we can be um, uh, telling people, you know, I, when I go around the province, I find that that many economic development or chambers have pe visitors come in and ask about businesses in the community. Um, many, a lot of times they might be asking more about the business environment business supports, um, that kind of thing, which is great. Um, but I think there's also a role that the chamber and economic development can play in finding out 
asking a couple of questions. What kind of business are you interested in? Are you interested in buying a business or you know starting? Um, and you may find that you you know of certain businesses that may be for sale, um, and you can help point them in a direction or you know maybe connect people if if that works. So I, I definitely think that there there is an opportunity. And certainly when visitors come and ask to have um, that, you know, welcoming presence and awareness that there are opportunities and this is this is a good place. And certainly, you know, uh, you should keep looking or to direct them to different sites to look for opportunities, that kind of thing. Um, our site, Venture Connect, which you'll get at the end, has lots of businesses for sale in in all of the communities around the province. So even directing people to that site to say, well, to go and look at what's for sale in our community. Um, the other thing that you can do is make sure that your owners, when they go to sell their business, spend less effort in putting a business for sale sign in the window and more on getting it on the internet so that people who are coming from elsewhere can find them. Yeah, I was gonna ask, uh, do buyers need or do sellers need to put more energy into promoting outside of their own community? Absolutely. That's it's you know, I it's unfortunate because I see younger sellers do this automatically and they do a good job. They put a bunch of pictures up, they put a good write-up up, they talk to us, they 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 listen, they, you know, we help them go through the things that need to be communicated. Older buyers are much more uh, cards close to the uh, best. They don't want to, uh, you know, tip their hand. They, you know, and and they and they do often a very poor job of even when they do list of putting information up on the site. Um, there is, I should before I forget, say that on our website now um, there is an ability for owners to advertise their business discreetly. So they don't have, they can have what's called a hidden listing. Hmm. So when people search a community, they can get, um, you know, bait some bare bones information, but nothing that would allow them to um, identify the business. So, so really what we want people to do is start sooner and get the information out there to a broader audience because, um, you know, one third to a half of business buyers are likely to come from uh, somewhere outside of the community where they don't know of the business. So they're not going to find out about it from seeing uh, a for sale sign in the store window. What are buyers looking for? Number one, it has to make some money. Hmm. Um, most people have to borrow money to buy a business. If the business doesn't make money, how can they borrow? It just doesn't work. So that is the number one thing that I think sellers fail to understand is that when somebody, when a business buyer is going to buy the business, they, they have to borrow money, they have to pay it back on an accelerated timeline. It's not a 25 year house amortization. They have to pay this loan back much faster than that. And their interest rates are much higher. So they, they, that takes cash flow. If there isn't enough cash flow in the business, then before the, the seller even tries to sell, they should consider whether they are going to be part of the financing solution. So the odds of selling your business go up dramatically if you are prepared to take some portion of it as a, a loan with interest that um, you finance. Now, when I mention this, nine out of 10 owners shake their head vehemently and say they absolutely wouldn't consider it. And by the time we get to the end, nine out of 10 will. <laughs> so if they would just make the decision sooner, they would have a far greater chance of selling the business because what generally will happen is they will burn through two or three good buyers um, while they're saying, no, 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 I won't. And then when they change their mind and say there will, there may not be any more of the right buyers for them. So I have that conversation right up front is, what are you prepared to do to help make the deal? And you don't have to advertise it, they just have to be prepared. 
um, the other thing is that, so, so buyers are looking for something that makes money. They're looking for things that have an opportunity to grow. They're looking for a lifestyle um, in a community, family, affordable, affordability, um, buyers that are coming from the lower mainland want to be able to buy a house and a business um, and take their kids to do some, you know, whatever it is that, that they want to do with their kids, sporting activities, outside stuff, um, you know, whatever it is um, that they want and uh, buying into the, the lifestyle that we enjoy in our smaller communities. So anything that we can do as economic development in selling the advantages of the community is huge. Um, but I think the other thing is that um, ensuring that the supports are there. So not only do um, the business owners have, you know, an opportunity or I would say a responsibility if they want to sell their business to be, to consider being part of the financing solution, but we also want to have other options available for them in the community. So obviously community futures, banks, credit unions um, are opportunities. Um, some of the banks are hesitant in some smaller communities to lend to businesses, certain types of businesses, that kind of thing. So obviously, you know, BDC, community futures are, are um, places to go in those situations. The other thing is that, um, that I think there's a real opportunity for is in some communities we have older business people who maybe don't have the energy to run their own business anymore, but could be part of something with a buyer. Um, so if we can find ways to match up um, people who have some money and maybe, um, you know, maybe they didn't own the business, but, but maybe they would be interested in being, uh, you know, minority uh, shareholder for a period of time while the younger buyer puts most of the energy into it and grows the business. And, you know, this can be a, a great solution. Somebody works a day a week or two days a week or just provides the money and some guidance. And in return, they get, um, you know, a share of the, the profits of the business. And down the road, they can sell their stake to um, the younger buyer. So, you know, looking for creative solutions within our communities and talking to business leaders and, and business owners and finding ways to, to look at matching money and opportunities with the business um, businesses and business buyers that are out there. So I think those are, are really good opportunities that we, we could um, work on. So I have a question for you actually about uh, yeah. business pricing. Um, back when I was in business school, I was always taught you don't pay for the opportunity you're going to make. Um, so do you see business sellers or owners uh, pricing their businesses in such a way as it's sort of priced for what it could become as opposed to what it is now? Yeah, that's that. That is one of the two biggest problems that I see in uh, sellers pricing mentality. Um, that's one. That is that they they have seen. So so if you think back to that graph where we've let the value of the business decline, um, and and now the seller says to the buyer, well, five years ago. Uh, it was double the income and all you have to do is put some work into it and you'll be back there. So therefore the business is worth it. Right. But from a buyer standpoint, that's just stupid. Why would you pay somebody for, I mean, that may help you to buy the business. You, it may encourage you to buy the business. If you look at it and say, yeah, if I, you know, put my back into it, um, I can see ways that I could double this. But I'm not going to pay you for it, yeah, because I have to do the work, right? So that's not part of the valuation. Um, so so that's that's a big mistake that owners make, and the other is that they price it based on what they need for retirement. Ah, okay. So I'm retiring. I need X amount of money, and so therefore that's what my business is. Uh, I'm going to take from my business, and if I can't get it. 
I will just continue to work it in a, you know, kind of a half-assed way for the next five years. Or shut it down. Um, or yeah, for as long as it's still making money and then I'll shut it down. Um, but that's not good for the community at all because the business is likely to decline further and then it's likely to close. Um, so they're far better off, it's far better for the community if they will uh, take a lower, um, you know, uh, selling price now but put some inject some new blood into the business to um, to grow it, and so that it has a chance to sustain and, and grow and, and continue to be part of the community. But yeah, that's that is a big problem. Um, we, you know, as we get older, we our, our memory we fail to adjust to new realities quickly. So it can take a long time before people finally acknowledge that yes, that's that's what my business is worth. And I remember when I was when I was working um, back in 2006, when the bottom fell out of the real estate market in the U.S. Um, Phoenix, for example, in one market where prices dropped in half, and sellers kept dropping their price by, you know, 10% every couple of months, mm -hmm. and but they lagged the market, so they would they would price instead of pricing it to meet the market, what they did was they they priced it above and then waited and then the market dropped and then they dropped to 10%, but they're still above the market. So they kind of followed the market all the way down and then ended up with half of what they could have got for a year earlier. So sometimes you're far better off to make, you know, a 20% drop now and now you can sell. Now you're actually in the ballpark. Um, and that's, you know, it, you know, it can get complicated because it depends on the kind of buyer and all of that kind of stuff. But if somebody's looking at the finances of the business, generally most sellers are probably 15 to 20 percent higher than what a buyer is going to look at it and and feel that it's worth. And that gap, when you get an offer, you know, that's the the opportunity of for the for the owner to close the gap and accept. And many times they won't. And it's fine if the business is growing because then your business will be worth more a year from now. But if the business is declining, the offer that you just rejected is the best one you're ever going to get. And and now you're kind of stuck and, and you're likely to end up closing. So so really, you know, from an economic development standpoint, we want businesses that are growing, that have energy put into them. And we want. Um, uh, sellers who are realistic about the prices and when to get out. Um, so really as an economic development officer, we need to, you know, help um, business owners understand that, you know, in some communities, business owners are very negative and they don't want to try because they think they'll fail. Hmm. And they feel like that's going to be a reflection on them that or, or on their business. And so it's almost a face saving thing to say, I'm going to close it. Um, but, you know, the reality is that most businesses have a chance to sell. There are buyers out there for many of them, provided they're priced right and they're um, advertised correctly. Um, appropriately, you know, uh, people can find them, the information is necessary, and there's a little bit of a sizzle, you know, put into the, uh, on the stake. Um, so as economic development people, we want to encourage people to try, first of all. We want to encourage them to start early and to think about all of the ways and the different kinds of buyers that are out there, um, put them in touch with some professional advice to at least have a conversation about their business and to get some tips about how to go about finding or making their business attractive and finding buyers for it. Um, and then the other supports on the financing, I think, are really, really important. Um, and as I talked about with the, the being aware of what's for sale in your community and being aware when buyers are poking around and, and looking for opportunities, and making sure that they see that they you can direct them to opportunities, whether it be on the website or ones that you happen to know about. Um, those are all things that can be um, uh, helpful to business sellers. Also, 
I, I always encourage a, um, when someone lists a business and they put together what we call a fact sheet or, you know, some, some material about the business talking, I always encourage them to have a page on the community hmm. on what it's like to live in this community. So, and just one page concisely done can be really, really helpful. Um, so I, I do think that there's, you know, the, the, when I do, when I write these things up, um, I always go to, you know, either Hello BC, Destination BC, or, uh, and, and the, um, the communities, economic development chamber pages, um, city hall that talk about what the advantages of the community are. So, and most of you do a really good job of, of having pages and pages of that, but it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have sort of a concise one page summary that people could just attach to um, their listings so that um, it, it sells the community better than most people are gonna do on their own. So um, those are certainly things that, that you know, could be helpful for, um, for business sellers. Um, and I'm, I, I'm going to throw in a poll question here because we've been chatting for a while and I want to get people out there engaged again. Uh, this is a you tell us what supports or services does your community have? This is just a, a handful of supports that, uh, that I have listed. What are the things that your community has? Uh, or has access to for helping or easing business succession and transition. Uh, resources to help owners prepare their businesses for sale, a business valuation professional, um, a business broker, financing partners, uh, or business owner training programs. And uh, maybe Daryl, you can talk about the, the role that some of these supports play in communities and also maybe what to do if you're a very small community and um, you know, there isn't a, a friendly neighborhood business valuation professional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, um, you know, certainly a broker or valuation professional. Uh, I, I do find also sometimes that, you know, people's accountants will provide them with a valuation on the business. Um, in my experience, that's a little bit tricky. Um, if, if they're your accountant, um, they may not want to give you bad news. They may or may not be uh, very aware of what um, the market is uh, for businesses if they haven't been involved in a lot of sales. Um, brokers tend to be just in the, the sort of more you know, major communities. Um, a lot of times they um, you know, may be less accessible for, for some small communities. Um, there are people, you know, Venture Connect, just, you know, for a little ad, we do valuations um, at a very reasonable price um, throughout the province. So some business owners feel that a uh, person needs to see their business. But if you're in a, a small community, that's going to get very, very expensive. Um, uh, there aren't a lot of access you know in small communities you can see there they're not a lot of brokers or business valuation people who do this professionally um, mm -hmm. available so you're far better off you know in, in my case for example you you know if you tell me the kind of business you have i would be willing to bet my car uh, that i have done at least four or six or eight similar businesses in similar communities around the province in the last couple of years. So you have so a pretty good idea. Your business, <laughs> your business is not likely to be that different. Okay. Um, and there are character, you know, by, by going through some questions, we find out the differences. You know, are there commercial contracts? Are there this? Are, you know, so, so there's, there's a variety of, of questions and things that we can ask. So generally, um, over phone, email, internet, um, you, can, you can do a, a very good job of understanding the value of a business in the community. The, the key thing really to ask somebody who's valuing the business is how familiar they are with the community size that you're in. Mm. If you're in you know, Burns Lake or Invermere, you know, a business broker in Vancouver, 
may not have much of an inkling of your community versus you know what goes on in the lower mainland so and that those are two completely different markets um, different buyers different all kinds of different things going on so so the biggest thing to ask when you're dealing with a professional is what's their experience with your kind of business and your kind of market um, certainly as economic development what you want to do is you want to encourage people to ask for some advice um, you know we find on our website about half of the listings come um, for sale by owner is how they start of those probably half of them end up with a realtor or a broker over time but you know we encourage and we work with either scenario um, so what is most important is that the the owner gets some advice from a perspective that's outside of their own that's professional um, that will you know stand them in good stead and help them to um, to have a better chance of selling their business um, and you can see with the poll results um, you know we we spend a lot of time on training programs and less on uh, you know some of the other aspects um, really the business valuation is is the key thing to start with it, they need to have a sense of what the market is for their business and i you know i don't mean to say that uh, owners don't know because a lot of times i find that owners have a pretty decent idea the problem is that they they don't necessarily understand how the value is different for a different kind of buyer and that and what will happen if they're not flexible so when we do evaluation we try to help prepare the owner for um, for what a buyer is going to say and to help them understand how to get the most out of any particular buyer and then understand that and either you know accept that or move on and and take their time and, and look for another another buyer right okay um so it it seems like there's a lot involved so here's you've got this great slide here it takes a village so our people on the webinar are generally the village that are trying to support the business owners so maybe talk about this a little bit yeah this and this this really sort of summarizes what we've been been talking about people buyers many buyers are are moving from somewhere to uh, a community um, they are looking they're coming from other parts and places in the province they're coming from other provinces they're coming from other countries um, and they are choosing the community as well as the business opportunity so you know when I talked before about encouraging sellers to include community information this is key what's attractive about the community how well are these features of the community communicated to to buyers from away service providers we talked about you know financing but also the fact that you know there's accountants there are insurance people there's uh, realtors there's 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 all of the the services that I'm going to need as a business owner are available in this community as well as things that I want for my children there's a hockey team there's um, good schools there's um, you know places uh, for outdoor activities lakes hikes you know those kinds of things that that we want for lifestyle uh, welcome services this is a business friendly community that you know chamber all the, the resources um, things that we have um, programs i'll put a plug in here for export navigator while we talk about while the the name is export really the program you know it's a pilot program in six regions around the province which is most of the areas of smaller communities it's really about business growth and finding markets for businesses from outside the community and most 60 percent of the businesses in that program are either some form of agri, agri food hmm. or manufacturing those businesses need buyers from outside of their community in order to be successful so what we want to do is encourage businesses to be growing and to be 
in order to be attractive to buyers. Um, so, you know, that's another resource. Um, even, even if someone is contemplating selling their business, if they can be selling it on an upswing, they're far more likely to be attractive and to find a buyer um, in a shorter period of time and at a, at a price that they, they want to sell at. Okay. Um, measuring. I love measuring things. What metrics can we use to measure our business succession progress? Well, on our website, we, we have worked at trying to measure um, things like, you know, whether people are successful, um, what they're finding, what their experiences are. Um, you know, as a community, certainly, you know, in, in a chamber, you, you measure how many members you have. Um, you can, you know, measure employment. It's difficult with, with um, uh, business owners because they, it, this is a fairly personal thing within, you know, did you sell your business or did you close it? Um, uh, I mean, obviously you can see that and you can, because you're there in the community and if, especially in smaller communities, I think it w it's well worthwhile to keep track of those kinds of things. How many people, um, you know, even if anecdotally you keep track of how many businesses close and nobody knew that they were for sale or they, they didn't go for sale. Um, certainly, you know, there's an opportunity, I think, to do, you know, in your business walk to ask questions about, you know, what point in the future would you consider selling your business? Um, how, how far down the road? Um, you know, gathering some statistics that way would tell you, uh, give you an idea of how many businesses are going to be coming up for sale in your community, um, and then thinking about the buyers. I think the other thing we could start to measure is we can ask questions about, um, you know, is there anybody, are there any employees in your business who would be interested in buying it? Um, you know, I, I saw that was a very low number. Mm -hmm. It should be higher. Um, I do believe that there are more uh, employees who are interested than owners who believe that they're interested. Yeah. Um, owners generally discount employees' ability to pay and to run the business. Yes. Because they are not as smart as I am because I've run the business and I tell them what to do. So clearly they can't run the business, you know, just that's logic. But the reality is that they would probably run the business slightly differently, but that doesn't necessarily mean it would be worse. Um, and certainly with some training and support, many of them could do a very good job of running the business. So I think a lot of times owners' minds are not as open as they should be about these kinds of opportunities. So I think that's a real opportunity for opening people's minds and saying, you know, asking the question mm -hmm. and finding out. And if if we're the answer if the the uh, answers we're getting are seem to be too low, then to think about how how could we start to change the minds of people in our community to to looking at the people that are already there as uh, potential opportunities for um, purchasing the business. Yeah. So I come across many situations where the owner did not think it was possible, but it happened. Um, somebody from outside the community, you know, no, this, they don't have money, but their uncle does. Right. You know, their uncle lives somewhere else and, you know, let you let Community Futures put a mortgage on their lot to finance the business. So, gee, that worked. Um, so, and there are many other situations like that. So, you know, the opportunities are there. We just need um, owners to be open. And the number one thing is plan ahead. Hmm. The more time they give themselves, the better the odds are that there's going to be not just a buyer, but a good buyer for the business. So having so, some sense of uh, the, num the numbers of business owners that are, are thinking five years down the road that they might sell and then getting the supports in place and having the awareness, uh, the discussions in place yeah. ahead of time. Um, I, probably three quarters of the businesses that we do valuations for are not for sale yet. And the owners oh. are just thinking. Oh. Uh, and 
what the great thing about doing it that way is that it gives you an opportunity to um, change things in your business to either clarify or to make it more attractive so that the odds are that you will get what you want for it uh, you know a year down the road when you list it you're in much better uh, place things like getting procedures manuals written or um you know, yeah, I mean, finally switching from an old bookkeeping. Uh, do, I, do I hire staff or don't I? Do yeah. I, uh, um, you know, do I run everything through the till when I haven't been? Um, did I say that out loud? But, uh, <laughs> it that's, happens. That's a real basic thing that um, is, you know, changes um, yeah. what you're worth. So, yeah. Uh, so, how oh, i actually i'm going to skip ahead to one thing i noticed that on our poll 55 percent of our communities uh mentioned or only 55 percent said that financing partners uh were in their community or supports or services that they had access to so i i made this list of aboriginal financial institutions um because there are nine of them and they're all over the province and they are uh, a resource um that is out there. Uh, what are some of the other financial partners that are available um, that ECDEV officers or Chamber of Commerce might want to build up relationships with? Yeah, well, certainly Community Futures, 33 locations around the province. They are absolutely somebody um, that is available in every part of the province. You're not too small for a Community Futures. Um, BDC, of course, is um, is an excellent resource. Um, probably slightly larger businesses, um, not always the smallest ones. Um, the um, credit unions um, and banks, it really depends. Um, those probably depend more on the buyer's credit mm -hmm. than the business. The, the good thing about, um, you know, things like Community Futures and BBC is they're focused on the business itself um, and they don't generally discriminate against types of businesses or community, rural communities or anything like that. They are looking at the economics of the business and whether it can support. Um, whereas sometimes with some of the financial institutions, they're, they're more sector focused. Um, and so then you know, in certain, for certain kinds of, you know, service businesses or whatever, you, the only way that you may be able to get a loan from some commercial vendors is if the business is larger, um, you know, in, for our small communities, or if your credit is such that you can do, um, you know, a home equity line of credit. Okay. Um, so, um, but th those are all things to um, think about for sure um, yeah. in terms of that. Um, you know, in terms of growing businesses, there's lots of, you know, agri agriculture, Canada, agriculture Canada, Agriculture BC, any kind of agribusiness, there is money if people want to expand. There are so many programs. It's such a good place to be. Um, you, you really can uh, access many, many good things there to, to uh, focus on, on growth. Um, and farm credit is, is good for, you know, expansion loans and, and those kinds of things. Um, so, yeah, those are, are some of the, um, uh, you know, small business BC we use for, for training and, you know, those kinds of things are, are good. Venture Connect is up there. Um, that's, you know, a resource uh, to check out, send people for listing their business or for advice or some of the services we talked about. So, um, because people can't click on the actual go to webinar screen, I've created a PDF version of this, which if you look in your control panel on go to webinar uh, in the handout section, you should be able to download this. Uh, it's just called additional resources.pdf and it has all of the links put in there so that you can download that and click through the links and get to each of these um, places. So uh, we're just nearing the end. Um, any final words of advice, Daryl, for our audience? Um, no, I think just, uh, well, yes. Uh, <laughs> don't give up um, and try and encourage people starting early and keeping an open mind and getting some um, outside advice. Okay. Um, and uh, I think that's, you know, that's the best thing that you can do for them. Okay.
Well, thank you very much, uh, Daryl. And just before we go, I'll let people know what's coming up and next in our webinar series, uh, November 22nd, which is a Thursday, uh, we're doing a BC Ideas Exchange Story Showcase. We will have uh, Joseph from Ucluet talking about the Ubera, uh, Ucluet Business and Employee Retention and Expansion Program, and uh, folks from the BC Film Crew, Film and TV Crew Training Program at North Island College and uh, North mm. Island Film Commission talking about their initiatives. Uh, and then December 4th, back on a Tuesday, we're going to have an extended session. Uh, so mark your calendars from 10 a.m. to 11, 15 a.m. Um, these are not Pacific Daylight Time. They are Pacific Standard Time. I forgot to update my slides there. Uh, we're going to be talking about strategic planning and economic development, and we're actually going to have three different communities talking about things that they have used the strategic planning toolkit for uh, in various aspects of developing an economic development strategy. Um, you can find out about those at um, our website or the short link is bit.ly slash ecdevwebinars. Um, I'm also working on the spring season, so stay tuned. That should be announced. Uh, give me till the end of November to line up our, our speakers and guests. If you want to be a guest, uh, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Um, most of you are already on the email list, so I'll skip through that. Um, but there is going to be a feedback survey. It'll either pop up in your browser or it'll come to you in an email. Um, it should come in about an hour. And this recording will be posted in approximately one week to our website. So thank you very much, uh, Daryl. And thank you, everyone, for joining us for our webinar today. I will uh, let you all escape. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.